Hello, my name is Kathy, and today we're going to discuss various methods of lighting in a non-electric situation. Let's start our discussion with open flame types of lighting such as candles and oil lanterns. Regular candles are not a really economical method of lighting. If you have a few candles, they will soon be gone. So this lighting source is best for short-term power outages. If the power outage is more or less permanent, you would need to think outside of the box. The least expensive and most long-lasting of all of the open flame methods of lighting is to insert wicks into a container of Crisco shortening or other shortening. This will burn for an unbelievable length of time, potentially a solid month or more. Animal fat in general acts in a similar fashion. The thing to remember about lighting that emanates from a wick is that it does not matter how big the, the candle or Crisco shortening container is. What matters is how many wicks you have. A wick will produce a certain amount of light and no more. So it is to your advantage to have several wicks in a large candle or Crisco shortening container. Three wicks is a good number for something the size of a Crisco shortening container. Wicks can be made of cloth, natural fiber, string, not synthetic, and things of that nature like maybe old mop handles, cloth mop handles. A wick will last as long as the candle or shortening can has material left in it to burn. One of the problems with having candles and other open flame items around is that they invariably end up sitting on your tables and counters and so forth. And although this can look really nice, it isn't a very practical way to live your life as the risk of knocking it over or starting a fire is really strong. If in a societal collapse has occurred and this type of lighting is now your lifestyle, then you need to rethink this situation. Now a really cool way to handle this situation is to make wall sconces out of aluminum cans. This is a very simple process. You rinse out the aluminum can to ensure that it is clean, then you cut the top off the can and then cut the bottom of the can two-thirds of the way through. Then you cut down the wall of the can and spread the walls of the can open so that they are left with is the bottom and the sheet of shiny aluminum that can wall that will reflect the light of the candle that you place in it. These aluminum can wall sconces can be in, mounted on your walls via the thumbtack. See? This is a can. Just an aluminum can. See the bottom is left on. You just cut it here. It's real simple. You cut the top right off and then spread the walls out like so. And then what you do is you just put your tea light here or container with Crisco or whatever and you, you mount it on the wall. Okay. Uh, anyway, you can mount them with a thumbtack, construction tape uh, stapler or a small nail. It is fireproof and keep in, keeps the open flame light source out of the way. Plus, you can put them anywhere. Up stairwells, in bathrooms, porches, and anywhere you need a bit of light. For more light in an area, add more wall sconces. The most economical method of maintaining these light sources is to use small containers that you can fill with Crisco shortening or animal fat and a wick. Or you can use tea lights, which last a good long time too and aren't all that expensive. This then moves us into the area of lighting your candles. Now matches and lighters are the obvious first choices, but when these run dry, and they will, you need something else. The best thing you can do for yourself is to get one of those inexpensive thin plastic magnifying sheets that are about the size of a sheet of paper. Um, if you have sunlight, you have a fire. No muss, no fuss. 
If you use this magnifying sheet to light the bulk of your fire needs, then the necessity of using your valuable lighters and matches is dramatically reduced. The next item to consider are the coal oil lamps. These are the standard for most non-electric housing situations and can produce a good light that is safely contained under a glass chimney. The key to using this lighting source is to find the perfect length of the wick that will produce the most light without depositing soot on the chimney. Dirty chimneys will dramatically reduce the light that an oil lamp will radiate so it's important to keep the chimneys clean. In the days before electricity, all the oil lamps of a house would be cleaned and the wicks trimmed to ensure the best possible lighting at least once a week. One of the best oil lamp inventions is the hurricane oil lamp. You have all seen this type of oil lamp. It's usually painted a bright red color and the chimney moves up just a bit so that you can light the lamp. Now the great thing about this oil lamp is that you can take it outside and the flame is protected from the wind. So you, if you have to do something outside at night, you have a dependable light source. Sardines are an excellent survival food. Excellent survival food. And they also, uh, they have a long shelf life and are full of protein and fats. Maybe you have some sardines packed in your emergency food storage. If not, consider them. Sardines that are packed in oil work well as emergency lights. You eat the sardines and then insert a natural fiber wick into the remaining oil and simply uh, bend the slightly over the edge of the sardine uh, container the wick. The wick in this case is a cotton string from a mop head, will, will absorb the oil. Once the wick is fully soaked, simply light the end. A sardine lamp with just a little bit of oil will burn for many hours. When the sardine oil is burned up, you can add regular vegetable oil. Now the sardine lamps will smell a fish. It's not really too cool, but if you're in a real emergency situation, it is a light. Um, natural vegetable oils will smell a little bit, but nowhere near as bad as sardine oil, just, just so you know. Okay, the next item to consider for emergency lighting is children's wax crayons. Crayons are basically colored wax. If you're in a hurry, just break the point of the crayon off and light the paper label at the end of the crayon. As the wax melts, the paper becomes a wick and one crayon light will last about 30 minutes. Not too bad for a little crayon. The next item to consider are the, st are the strong light source of the traditional camping lamp. <clears throat> These devices produce a wonderful strong light that is just as bright as an electric light. The trouble with them is that the butane fuel that they need to work may not be available. But if it is, this is definitely the way to go. The next item on our list are the wide range of solar lights that are available. Even those tiny garden path solar lights can serve a purpose. They are too dim to be of any use as a normal light source, but they can be used to indicate stairs and so forth. They usually are affixed to a stake that you shove into the ground, so you would need to insert this stake into a coffee can or something of this nature filled with soil and placed where you want them at night time and during the daytime they'd be outside where they'd be recharging for you. The next solar items are the formal outdoor solar lights that you find everywhere. These are excellent. Charge them outside during the day and bring them in at night. The rechargeable batteries for these devices can last three to five years depending. That's pretty darn good. After the batteries burn out, they turn into lawn ornaments, unfortunately. A better method of using uh, the power of solar energy is to employ it with the soda bottle lights. I have made a video on this lighting source that goes into the particulars of this lighting me uh, method, and I strongly recommend you take a look at it. In ancient times, people used the light of fires as a lighting source. You can use a brazier 
which is a simple fireproof pan of some variety that you build a fire for lighting in. It is traditionally raised about four feet off the ground for maximum illumination. This is not the best method of illumination because it creates a lot of smoke and interferes strongly with decent air quality, but it is a lighting source. And of course there's the tr traditional flaming torch that we have all seen in movies. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care!